Today I'm going to show you how to charge an empty R134AC system after servicing it. If you intend to open your AC system for service, you must check it for any pressure with a manifold gauge set. If either gauge reads anything other than 0 PSI, you need to have the system evacuated. On this vehicle, the leak was so large, all of the refrigerant leaked out completely, so there was no need. Make sure to wear gloves and safety glasses when working on the AC system. Refrigerant can instantly freeze skin, causing frostbite, and can blind you if it gets in your eyes. Now over here you have two lines. This is the high side, coated red. This is the low side, coated blue. Now the type of couplers you have may vary. These are what are known as manual couplers because you have to put them on to the fitting. And then in order to depress the Schrader valve, you turn this knob fully clockwise. And then again, when removing them, turn it counterclockwise, then you can pull back the coupling and release it. The other type is automatic. This is the other type you'll run into. It doesn't have the Schrader depressor knob on the back. It's automatic. When you push it on, it'll automatically depress the Schrader valve. And these will actually lock the lock ring in the open position when the connector isn't connected when I pull it off, you can see the ring here will lock and won't slide forward until I put it on and press it down. So that's an added feature of this type of coupler. Next, you'll want to find your high and low side charging ports. If you trace the two refrigerant lines from the compressor, the larger diameter line called the suction line will have the smaller low side port. Some vehicles will have this port on a cylindrical tank called an accumulator. The location of the high side port will vary. Follow the smaller line from the compressor to the condenser. The port may be on this line called the discharge line. If it's not there, follow the other line leaving the condenser. This is called the liquid line. The port may be here also. You can see right down there, color coded in red and blue, our service ports. This larger one's the high side, smaller one's the low side. Remove the caps. You also want to make sure that both your valves are closed before you connect the hoses. If both valves aren't closed and you connect your gauge set to the system while it has refrigerant in it, the refrigerant in the system will vent dangerously through the yellow charge hose. Now just attach your couplers. The smaller one goes on the low side, the larger one goes on the high side. They're two different sizes so you cannot mix them up. Pull back the ring, push the connector on, release it. Same for the high side. Now since I have the manual couplers, I'm going to turn these knobs to the full clockwise position and depress the Schrader valve. If you have the other type of coupler that doesn't have these, the Schrader valves will automatically get depressed when you install the couplers. This is the vacuum pump. It's very important you vacuum out the system in order to remove all air and moisture. Moisture will combine with the refrigerant and create acids that will eat the aluminum parts. That corrosion can flake off. It'll go flowing through the system and it'll plug up your orifice tube screen, plug up your expansion valve, and more importantly it will allow shavings of metal to get into your compressor which will eventually destroy that. So I'm going to remove the cap on the port here and connect the yellow charging hose from the gauge set to this port. Don't forget to remove this cap on these older vacuum pumps. They have this older style cap where if you leave it on the air pressure will blow it off into the air and you're going to have to go looking for it. Now with both valves closed, turn the pump on. Now open the low and high side valves all the way.
loci gauge on a manifold gauge that is known as a compound gauge because it reads both positive pressure and vacuum. Just as positive pressure is expressed in pounds per square inch, vacuum is expressed as inches of mercury. Now keep pulling the vacuum on the system for a minimum 30 minutes. I like to do it for an hour. A good vacuum pump should have no problem pulling the system down to 30 inches of mercury. After an hour's up, close off the high and low side valves. Turn your vacuum pump off. Now to test for large leaks, I leave both valves closed and the vacuum pump off. And then leave for about 30 minutes. If when I come back, the needle is still pointing at 30 inches of mercury, that means that you don't have any large leaks in the system. If the vacuum level drops, that means one of two things. Either you have a leak in the system or moisture has boiled out of the system and caused the vacuum level to drop. Now how I isolate if it's moisture is, I'll turn the pump back on, open the valves, pull it down to 30 inches again, and let the pump continue to run for 30 minutes to draw out any additional moisture. After 30 minutes are up, close the valves, shut off the pump, and wait an additional 30 minutes to see if the vacuum level drops again. If the vacuum level is dropped again, then I'll start looking for leaks. Well, it's been 30 minutes. And we're still at 30 inches of mercury. So we can charge the system. Speaking of moisture, it's important to replace your receiver dryer or accumulator depending on your AC system design after the system has been opened. The desiccant in either of these components will absorb moisture in the system that if left unchecked will create acids that will eat the aluminum components of the AC system causing leaks. Now the two ways to charge the refrigerant. As a vapor, that's when the valve is pointing up, or as a liquid. To do that you want the valve pointing down so you flip your container over like so. I'm going to be charging it as a vapor because it's a much safer process. You can charge the refrigerant as a liquid, but extra precautions are required. I won't be covering that here since the only real advantage of liquid charging is speed, with the danger of compressor damage if not done properly. AC compressors are designed to compress refrigerant vapor, not liquid. If liquid refrigerant from the charging process were to get into the compressor while it was running, it would suffer serious damage. Same thing if you're using the cans. Valve up for vapor. Valve down for liquid. Now to install these, first open the valve up all the way. That retracts the piercing pin in there. Then you thread it tightly on top of the refrigerant can. Then you turn the valve all the way back down. And what that does is this piercing pin then pierces the seal on the can. And the next time you open this valve, refrigerant will be released from the outlet. You can see in there, that's the piercing pin. That only comes out when the valve is closed. Now as far as accuracy is concerned, the only way to put refrigerant in professionally is with a scale. By scale, I mean refrigerant scale. Bathroom scales aren't accurate enough. And a container of refrigerant the problem with the cans is the amount of refrigerant specified by the manufacturer isn't always the amount of one can. So you know you could put two cans in and then you have to put three quarters of the last can and you're left guessing how much is left. With a scale you basically zero it out and as the refrigerant leaves the cylinder it's indicated on the readout here and you know exactly when the right charge weight has been reached and you're not guessing. Many people get by with the disposable refrigerant cans without a scale, but remember, too little refrigerant can cause insufficient cooling, while too much can cause system damage. The minimum equipment to charge your own AC system is a motorized vacuum pump, stay away from those cheap shop air vacuum pumps, a manifold gauge set plus the refrigerant. 
Cost-wise, it's more cost-effective to have the system charged at a shop, but the tools will pay for themselves if you have multiple vehicles to recharge. Normally, you'll find a sticker somewhere under the hood with the charge weight, but if the vehicle's been in a front-end collision like this one, the sticker is usually gone, so you'll need to consult your service manual. I checked out my service manual. The specifications for this vehicle is 650 grams. That comes out to one pound, seven ounces. I'm going to turn my scale on. And I can select the units, kilograms, pounds, pounds and ounces. I'm just going to use kilograms, just a preference. So I'm going to put down my refrigerant cylinder, valve facing up on the scale. And remove your charging line from your vacuum pump. Put it onto the cylinder. that's on I'm going to zero out the scale as you can see when I put the line on there it added a bit of weight that's why I waited to zero it out that will skew my reading so I'm just going to hit the tear button and we're at zero kilograms before we do anything with this though I have to bleed the charging line of air and here's how you do that go to your charging cylinder and open the valve up all the way Go to your gauge set and loosen the center charging line just so a little bit of refrigerant hisses out. Don't remove the line, just loosen it up a bit to hear a bit of refrigerant hiss out for a few seconds. And that's enough. The purpose of that was to bleed any air out of the charging line. If you didn't do this, the instant you open this valve to charge, you'd push a pocket of air into the system. Purging the charge line of air is technically letting a small bit of refrigerant to atmosphere. Releasing refrigerant is normally prohibited by EPA regulations. However, there's an exemption for purging your lines. I'm going to point you down at the scale, but what I'm going to be doing up here is opening the low and high side valves. You can only open the high side valve when the compressor isn't running. If you open the high side valve when the compressor is running and your charging cylinder valve is open, the compressor will compress the refrigerant in the system and force it into your cylinder, which can cause it to rupture. Most disposable charging cans have a stamped cutout on the bottom of the can, which will release the refrigerant in a controlled manner to prevent it from rupturing. The 30 pound cylinders that I use have a pressure relief disc at the top of the tank. The disc will also break and release the contents of the cylinder to prevent a rupture. In any case, having a large quantity of refrigerant vent from the container is dangerous and should be avoided. Opening the two valves. Now you can hear that the refrigerant flow has stopped. That's because the pressure in the cylinder here has reached equilibrium with the pressure in the system. So in other words, the pressure in here and the pressure in there are equal. So no more refrigerant can flow. In order to get the refrigerant to keep flowing, we're gonna have to start the vehicle up and the compressor will pull the refrigerant out of the tank. But before we do that, Remember, we have to shut off both the low and high side valves. All right, we're gonna go into the vehicle, turn the AC on to engage the compressor. Most vehicles have a pressure switch that prevents the compressor clutch from engaging when the refrigerant is under a certain pressure. On this particular vehicle, it's around 26 PSI. If the refrigerant pressure is below 26 PSI, the switch won't complete the circuit and allow the compressor clutch to activate. But as you can see here, we're at about 55 PSI, so we're going to have no problem. If your vehicle has a higher set pressure and the pressure switch is 
not completing the circuit, you're going to have to pull off that two pin connector and jump it so that the compressor will engage and you can continue charging. To test if you'll need to jump the AC pressure switch, start the vehicle up and turn the AC on. You should hear the compressor clutch click. You can also look at the compressor pulley. If the hub at the front of the pulley is rotating, the compressor is running. You can also use your manifold gauges. If the low side pressure is dropped and the high side pressure is increased, you're good. If not, you'll need to consult your service manual for the location of the AC pressure switch, since it can be anywhere on the AC components or tubing. Turn the fan on full blast. Make sure you're set to the full cool position. And turn the AC switch on. Then just start her up. And you can hear the compressor clutch engaged. Let's go out there. You can see here the compressor actually pulled the vacuum on the low side. This is because there's so little refrigerant in the system. By reducing the pressure on the low side, the vapor pressure in the refrigerant cylinder is once again higher than the pressure on the low side of the system, so the refrigerant can continue to flow. Now remember, do not open the high side valve. Only open the low side valve from this point on to charge. So now we're going to continue charging until we reach 650 grams. And that's the rate at which the refrigerant leaves the cylinder, so let's speed it up. are 650 grams. Once you're nearing the final charge weight, be ready to close the low side valve. Once you're all finished up, shut the valve on your cylinder off. Now you can disconnect your cylinder. Disconnect your charging lines. On these, I have to remember turn these Schrader depressors fully counterclockwise. Let's pull back the coupling and remove them. that side. Don't forget to install your charging port caps. The caps and valves are similar to the ones on your tires. While the Schrader valve prevents all the refrigerant from coming out when you remove your manifold gauge lines, even a good Schrader valve will leak a minute amount. The cap will seal this minute leak and prevent debris from getting into the charge ports. That's why if you were to remove your charge port caps after a long period of time, you'd hear a tiny hiss of refrigerant escaping. This is normal and means that your charge caps are doing their job and sealing the ports. After you're done with your pump, reinstall the cap. And don't forget the air outlet plug. This will prevent contaminants from getting into your pump. And with the AC on, we have ice-cold air.